Perfect. All right. Welcome everyone to this training on social media to advance a 28th amendment. My name is Marnie Walsh and I'm the empowerment coordinator at American Promise. It's exciting to be with you. I want to let you know that this training is going to be recorded. The purpose of this social media training to advance the 28th amendment is to help you become a more confident and enthusiastic advocate. In addition, this training also aims to inspire you about the urgent need to spread our message about a constitutional amendment and get people motivated via social media to win a passage and ratification of a 28th amendment. Tonight's call is the beginning of the fifth training that will then become the social media team, part of our series of five trainings and advocacy teams. The teams that have already launched include one, writing letters to the writing letters to the editor that actually get published, two, getting elected officials to act, three, run banking for, for a 28th amendment, and four, organizing events. I wanna make it clear that we're not just talking about a one-time training and then wish you luck. No, the American Promise Empowerment Way is to provide you with trainings and then offer support from a team of folks who, we, who will meet monthly led by trained volunteers to support each other in taking action in that area. These ongoing advocacy teams are a good way for chapter leaders to get any new volunteer members trained in these tactics so new people can be more effective when working with their chapter on getting their state ready to ratify. Monica Rodriguez, a part of New Jersey's chapter, is a volunteer leader of the social media team. This will be held on the third Wednesday of the month. We still need a, one co-leader to assist Monica. So if you're interested, email me at marniew at americanpromise.net. That's marniew at americanpromise.net. Tonight's training is gonna be exciting and we have a special guest. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Zai. Okay, thank you, Marnie. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I put together a little PowerPoint so you guys can follow along. It is a lot of information, so just so you all know, there would be there will be a resource, like a document in the resource section on our website, so everybody can go back and look through the different links that are open and the different resources that we've set up with this. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yep. Okay, great. So, American Promise depends on citizen, act, citizen activism being the force behind the 20th Amendment. Social media is an easy way to engage and organize, so having a strategic presence is key to bringing people into the movement. This toolkit provides AP chapters and members with ideas for building their social media presence and increasing engagement for the American Promise cause. So our goals and objectives are of our social media channels for all of our AP chapters and, uh, and you know, with our volunteers is to raise awareness of the dominance of big money in our elections and the solution of the 20th Amendment and attract new members to our cause from their local sectors. It is important for chapter members and supporters to utilize local appeal in order to get their community and state more involved increasing overall awareness. The social media channels that we focus on are, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, we do encourage all chapters who are deciding to start a new page to only focus on creating a 
state-based Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook because the way LinkedIn algorithm works is best as a global page with multiple geographic audiences and caters to this type of specific targeting. So it's best to, for this platform, the best thing you can do is to share content that comes from the national page and to like posts and of course tag when you found something that goes along with our mission. We will include in the document a way for everybody to go ahead and if they need help with just setting up one of these platforms in general, that document will show you the breakdown of how to set up Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So proper AP messaging. Uh, one thing we want is to make sure that we are aligned as an organization in our messaging. So that way there is no confusion on where we stand and what we are trying to accomplish. So I went ahead just to, so that is out there in our PowerPoint, looking at our mission and our vision. So that way, when we are creating content for American Promise, we, all right, can everybody see the slide okay? Awesome, okay. So this is going back to our goals. Like I was saying before, just um, making sure that we're raising awareness of the dominance of big money in, in our elections. We're sharing how a constitutional amendment can restore the people's voice. And we're getting our community members involved and advocates for the 28th Amendment um, nationally and locally in our communities to strengthen the American Promise team. So again, these, is our, these are the social media platforms that we're focused on. And if anybody needs help on how to create any of these platforms, minus LinkedIn, which we think is best for nationally, for the national organization, just to have the one, you will have the document and the PowerPoint available for you guys to be able to go through and get that assistance. Okay, so Getting back to the proper AP messaging, we want to be able to, when, when posting, we want to make sure that it is align, aligning with the mission and the vision of American Promise and the core values that we stand for. So I just wanted to include these just so that it's always in the forefront of our minds when we're thinking about advocating and sending our message out through social media for American Promise. Okay, so getting into engagement. Engagement is very important for reaching more people and starting conversations about the amendment. It's great to try to get others to interact through likes, shares, and comments on your posts. When comments come in, you know, be sure to respond to comments, uh, which encourages, you know, more conversation underneath the feed, which in turn leads to more engagement and more exposure for the post. And also, it's also a good thing to comment and mention AP National page under posts that align with our voice and mission. So when you see posts and things and activities that are going on by other members or um, other groups and you feel like this is something that aligns with American Promise, uh, just saying, hey, this is great. This is a great reason why we're working with at USA Promise um, to for the amendment. This allows for not only the conversation to stir up more and drives traffic to the chapter page as a social media platform, but it also puts uh, the national page on the line too as a point of conversation and a way for people to get to know, learn more. And another important part of having engagement is being able to post regularly so post, posting regularly would be about like three posts a week or more. So three posts being like a minimum. And for some, it's hard to be able to post consistently. So a great scheduling tool would be later.com. There's also instructions on how to create an account on later. Later allows you to automatically post to your Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so that if you don't have time to post consistently, you can just schedule out the post you want to send out and they'll send it out on the days that you want it to go out for. This helps with us, again, being able to post more consistently. And it is a free platform. 
So going on to content. Curated content um, and the type of content you put out. All right, so curated content includes the graphics and images gathered for sharing your, on your platform. This includes events graphics, polling information, political cartoons, think pieces, quotes, videos, links, so on and so forth. You can always share content like this from the National American Promise pages, but you can gather this type of content on your own. So what we have done is we put together some resources that everyone can use to go ahead and have some 20 amendment images, event related images, uh, images about joining American Promise. And you can always use your candidate pledges when a candidate from your state and local area signs the pledge. These are great for, of course, increasing engagement. We have also put together a graphic template to assist with announcing upcoming chapter events. And all you need to do is create a Canva account. So creating this, this slideshow is made through Canva. Canva is really, it's, used, it's more user-friendly than a lot of the other graphic design tools. So it is free to create an account for Canva as well. And when you create the account, if you need help on how to create that account, we also have a tutorial on how to do that. Uh, the templates that we put together are both square and uh, banner size graphics because different platforms require different types of image sizes. When you have your graphic, um, just be sure to, if you would like to change the background, that you can change the background some, to something that visually depicts the, the call or event that you have. Okay, sharing stories. It's encouraged to have members share their journey with American Promise and why getting big money out of politics is important. Politics is important to them. Personal stories and experience let, experiences let people see what the chapters are doing and how fun joining a chapter can be. So we love being able to have uh, pictures, videos, quotes. I think a lot of times we get kind of in the way of curated content as in the graphics and things like that. But being able, I know we're slowly getting back into live events, but you can still, you know, take screenshots of Zoom calls that you have if, you know, with permissions um, and share that. It's also great to ask members to record videos of themselves expressing their excitement for upcoming event, previous events, um, just to give people a part of the journey that you're going through with American Promise. Um, it's always good to be able to share those things personally yourself too, like, hey, so excited for this call that's coming up, or a picture of getting ready for a call, or getting ready for a tabling event, or something like that. Just allows people to feel like, okay, this is behind the scenes, this is what's going on, and this is something they can see themselves doing too. So taking pictures during new events and things of that nature. Okay, so kind of getting into the tactics of every different social media account um, because they're all, uh, they all have their own algorithms, which is like the way that they're set up and commute, com computed to do things. Um, each one is different in its own. So Facebook is a great platform to share money and politics news and things that are going on in American Promise and the chapters. Uh, this is where you would post your think pieces and links to new stories. You can also post videos and write or share images or quotes. I feel like Facebook is the, the social media platform that is a lot more diverse than the other ones, as in the things that you can post and things that you do, which is why I know we were saying um, Facebook is the one most people are more familiar with. So some of the tactics for Facebook is using two to four hashtags throughout your post to help with engagement. We included some examples like hashtag 28 men, hashtag get money out and 28-8-2026, which you will see a lot more. You can also create events. When you create events, because Facebook allows you to create events on, uh, you know, Facebook events, creates events and stuff like that. So when you create an event on Facebook, it's always great to 
uh, asked an American Promise, the national page, to be a co-host. So that way we can promote, it helps with promoting the event as well. And if you have a special speaker or someone who's on the call, ask them, you know, would you mind being a co-host? Would you like to co-host? So that it can be shared with a lot more networks. Another important thing with thinking about Facebook is Facebook's algorithm favors posts from individuals rather than businesses or organizations. So any posts you as an individual shares is being seen around 40% of your contacts. This means it's important to not only like and share posts on your personal page, but encourage your page followers and network to do the same. So when you have a social media post um, on like a chapter page, you know, it'll, it'll be good to go ahead and repost that on your page as well. And if somebody, if when you post something, it's like, hey, if you agree with this, like, share, tag someone you think also agrees with this too, or something along the nature of that to encourage other people to like, but also to share and comment. So another way you can encourage followers to take action on your social media accounts is for them to select see first under the follow drop down button. Uh, so they can see all of your pages, all of your posts as they come in. And remember to mention the people involved in any post in the description by adding the at sign in front of their social media handle, tag them as well to make it easier for them to share. Hi. Yes. Where was the see first option? So the see first option is under the drop down. Uh, section on your on your um, under the follow button when somebody goes to your page. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. I know this is a lot. Any other questions right now? Zaya, it's Maria. I just want to ask a quick question too. So, if we just have the group um, the group page for our state chapter under the national, excuse me, the, a group under the national page, then we don't have that ability. Is that correct? That C first? Uh, no, I'm, I, I have to double check, but I don't think yeah. you do. It's okay. also encouraged to go ahead and create a Facebook page if you like, so that way you can have more engagement opportunities and way to center around you know, your, your local group. Excuse me, hi. Um, I just wanted to chime in. Um, I've uh, already uh, used the See First uh, uh, feature on Facebook. You can find it under settings and the uh, newsfeed settings. So it's basically something you have on your newsfeed that's, you know, that will just make sure you see certain things first before you see anything else. So, and, you know, like if you just want to, like, if there's certain things you really want, like to see every day or that you prefer to see, uh, either certain friends or, or pages that you prefer to see rather than others, you know, then you, you can do that. You could choose up to, um, I don't know, two to three dozen different um, uh, Facebook uh, pages. They could be friends, they could be organization pages. So, you know, American Promise can be included in that. And so you can find it, like I said, under settings and um, uh, newsfeed settings. That's basically what it is. That's it's your newsfeed. Yeah, so organize your newsfeed better. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so um, going on to Twitter tactics. Twitter content includes topics and conversations that are more brief, but still informative and inviting. This is a great place to share your thoughts on recent events and the amendment, excitement for events to come and banner style images and graphics. Twitter, um, a way that you can increase engagement with Twitter is to be able to uh, retweet different items that come in um, that aligns with the message and the things that we're, you know, trying to do with the amendment. Um, it's also, Twitter makes it easy for retweeting, so it's always helpful to retweet posts from the American Promise National page and other par partner organizations to stay connected and to encourage your followers to re retweet your post, so kind of creating relationships that way. Continue to use hashtags and mentions to increase the reach of your post. Because of the conversational aspect of Twitter, it is more common to post thoughts and topics multiple times a day. So 
um, posting, hey, so excited for this new call that's coming up. If you haven't registered already, go ahead and register. Just a quick comment like that or other quick comments throughout the day is easier to do with Twitter. And be sure to pin hot topics in recent events so it is the first thing people see when they go and look at your page. So if you have an event that's coming up or new exciting news that may have happened in your state when it comes to the amendment, I would suggest pinning that so that it's at the top of your page and people can see it more if other tweets and comments and posts start coming through. Uh, did you, do you want us to ask little questions now or you want us to wait till the end? Um, there's, we're almost done, so we can wait to the end. Okay. Okay, so um, Instagram tactics. For Instagram, Instagram consists of image and video posts. It is best to place your curated content on this platform because it is, of course, a visual platform. This includes graphics for the events again, polls, quote memes, in pictures slash videos from recent events. If your profile bio, in your profile bio, be sure to include keywords about what American Promise is all about, because this allows for somebody, if they're searching for you know, a particular topic, they can see your Instagram profile as something that relates to that topic. So try adding also the, you know, uh, imagine a government run by the people, not money. Something along the lines of, this is what we do as American Promise. It's also things that you can do is add the website link to American Promise on there so that when they're on your bio or on your page, they can go to the website to learn more. And we can also, volunteers also want to find more ways to interact, they can add the website as well, or they can just add the local or national page on their site, so on, on their web page, so it will then go to the profile as well. Tagging others for posts as it relates to them can include both the person in the picture and the elected official you would like to reach. So tagging is another good way to be able to get people to interact. And tagging does turn on notifications. So sometimes you may want to make sure that it's okay to tag. Most of the time people are okay with it. But you know, if we have an event coming up and somebody is involved, tagging them, you know, they'll also receive notifications for it and the, the posts and things like that. When writing captions, make sure to include spaces in between every pause so content is easier to digest. So uh, the way Instagram is, having captions with longer descriptions tend to do better. So having a long description though can also, you know, be a lot to read on that like thin long line. So the best thing to do for that is just when you're finishing like a paragraph or part of a phrase, break it up kind of in spaces. So everybody's getting the key points and it's easier to read. We also wanna encourage creating an image description at the bottom. So make it more accessible for everyone. For those, you know, just an image description, this is what's going on in the image for other people to be able to read. When writing um, captions, include spaces, I just said that. Also add a description of the image. I also said that as well. So for Instagram using five to 15 related hashtags at the very bottom of the caption helps with engagement. And if somebody is looking again for a particular topic, they're able to see, okay, how do I find out more about the amendment? How do I get money out of, uh, big money out of politics? They're able to see those hashtags at the bottom. So you can either put the hashtags at the bottom or you can add it as the first post comment if you don't want it too many things on your caption bottom. And I know that was a lot of information, so I'm going to end it. Well, that's all for what we have here. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you, Zai. So if people have a few questions, 
now's the time to ask them. And I'm gonna just take notes as well when people are asking questions so I can pass along any information that's um, necessary in the follow-up email as well. So I had put a question, I have two questions. I put a question in the chat, later.com that you mentioned that the, um, the scheduling um, site, do they, will they just, do you have to create a separate post for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and then each one will be scheduled and posted or will it cross post, you know, put the information up and it will adjust and make a post for each one of those? Uh, you can put it up every in every separate one. So what it does is if you have a particular image, you can drag that image into the box for the post that you want to make. You can select all your profiles. So you can do Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and it'll show you the caption for every single last one of those. And you can edit the caption as you need to for that post. Okay. So you can do it just as one or you can make adjustments to each post as well. Okay, great. That's pretty helpful. And then my other question is, I use Twitter, but when you say mention on Twitter, what does that mean? Does that mean, you know, you can make a comment under a post? Does that count as a mention or retweeting with a new, um, a new comment on the retweet? Um, is that a mention or both do both can count? <laughs> yes. So mentioning is anytime you, um, you mentioned them. So if you if you put the the at in their their tagline, that's mentioning them, and they'll be notified for, you know, the mention. So yes, it, it applies to both, and both are helpful to, of course, mention when event is including them, but also mentioning in comments um, to you know continue to keep the conversation going or to get a conversation started. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have a question about trainings and you can tell me if this is like a discussion that Sam and Marnie should I have, should have, you know, aside. Um, but when we do these trainings, are we training people to create content or are we trying to increase um, visibility? Because it, you know, they're, they're like, they're like two different things mm -hmm. and just, you know, it's difficult. I mean, I know on this side, we've, we've really got to learn how to use these tools, you know, as well as the, the other side tends to use them. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're, if we're training people to create content and then post it, or if the goal of the, the trainings is to kind of like increase AP's messages and visibility out there. I would say it's kind of a mixture of both. So uh, the initial training is like Zai has went through all or the different platforms that would be that would be best to gain engagement, following, and people to interact with your posts. But then in our team calls, we we can dive into the resources Zai provided and learn how to set up later, how to create an effective Canva post or Instagram post. Right now, it's kind of like the overarching, like these are the tools, these are what's most effective from Zive professional background and experiences, and then diving deeper in our team calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of going off what Marnie said, this is, this is really, again, like a lot of information, just so that we have the information, we know that the resources are there to then go in deeper into the different topics and stuff like that. Cause I think both are important. It's, it's, more in, it's important to increase engagement, but it's also important to have good content so that we don't try all these engagement tactics, but our contact, content isn't there. Yeah, well, I know these, these questions have, both sides of these questions have like come up on leader calls. Um, you know, so that's why I was curious about it. Mm -hmm. So are we, um, so this is like an overall, these are the, the platforms that, that we probably should be using. And then will the subsequent team calls be, okay, this is how to set up your Facebook or this is how to do Instagram or, or you know, and focus individually on the platforms or are we just kind of diving in wherever we're comfortable and, and uh, you know, 
Let me say something which may not be accurate, but just my own kind of thought about it. I think it would be interesting, for example, if Monica uh, on a team call shared her screen and began to create, let's just say uh, a tweet and discussed with the group, well, well, why are you doing this? And why are you tagging that? And why are you, uh, why are you structuring it that way? Uh, and that she would then uh, tweet it. And then others could then go off in their own account and there might be a beginner level, people who haven't signed up for Twitter yet. And then the others who are ready to do it, who go and create their own uh, tweet uh, based on what they've just learned and kind of exercise the muscle, you might say. So I, that's my thought, but that, that may not be the right way to go. But, but, to, but to really, it's not like, talk about writing a letter to the editor, write one, not uh -huh. talk about tweeting, but think through why, what are you doing and why are you using these tags or these hashtags or whatever, and then complete it and send it and then go off and let everyone else on the call do their own, yeah. maybe multiple, but that yeah. seems like it could be really practical. Um, yeah, I, I think I mentioned this before. One, one thing the, the Montclair Dems group did was something similar to that. And it actually kind of branched into kind of a different two directions there where we had a leader who would create a tweet um, and it might be, or it might've been a retweet or something, you know, it, it would be some content that the group, you know, wanted to put out there. Um, we would be on the call all with our accounts open that he had earlier shown us how to create and had given us some tutorials on how to do. And then we would all go in and retweet and um, you know share or whatever, like as a group. So I think at the high point, we probably got up to about 30 people. Um, and so it actually became, started to become effective because it's those numbers that you, that you need. Um, we would also kind of as a separate thing, we would go to a site that was, you know, interesting and had good content. It might be, you know, Mikey Sherrill's site or something like that. And she might've posted something and we would all like, as a group, let's all share this, let's all like it, let's all comment on it. Um, you know, let's put a note down in there that, hey, you know, we're doing X, Y, and Z related to this. And it started to, you know, it actually started to have an impact because it's just, it's so difficult to get visibility. And so that's what I was thinking, Sam, it's kind of a, you know, once you get to the point where people know how to use the tools, then you need this kind of small army of people sharing and liking and commenting. And that gave us kind of a, a place to do it. And it was also a group activity, it's a little bit more fun than just sitting there alone. Um, so, you know, that, that, I think would be a part of, but I know that a lot of leaders have asked about creating and getting content from here or there and putting there on their Facebook pages. So there seem to be a different, you know, several sets of questions around it. I think one thing is that, um, if we just show people how to create the content and then kind of leave them on their own, it's, you know, it becomes very difficult to keep it going on. First of all, I think as we've all discussed, it's very time consuming. So to the extent you can grab content and share it, it's, it's much better. And I know AP is putting out a lot of, um, putting out a lot of things. So there, there is content there for us to share. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other questions that have come up on the leader calls about using it and getting the message out there. I don't know if anyone can recall some of the other questions and concerns the leaders have had on their calls. I would say it's great that um, we are, you know, that the social media team is coming together. Um, again, this was like more so like an overarching um, you know, intro into some of the resources that you guys can use. I know some of the links didn't show up, but there's also 
you know, there's a lot of links to be able to have resources to go ahead and create some of these um, conversations and these team calls going. One thing I do think, great Monica, that I agree with you is being able to have a team meeting where everybody is just having like a scheduling party. So if everybody has later, you can like have a whole bunch of posts that you all are helping each other with. And so you have posts going out consistently for the week um, or even the month, you know? So definitely uh, taking these resources and using them definitely is, is the goal. Are there any other questions about the different platforms that I went through? Um, not really. I just with when it comes to Instagram, um, I really struggle with this with this one on how you so Twitter. The most effective thing I found on Twitter is latching on aside from sharing, you know, straight content but is latching on to um, influencers, people who have a lot of followers. And, you know, you might use like um, John Sarbanes, who's a very, you know, he's a big proponent of the um, getting money out of. So he might post something and you pop in really quickly after with a comment or reply and include, you know, APs, you know, working on this. Um, and that seems to be kind of the best way to get exposure if you're not an influencer, if you don't have 40,000 followers or whatever. But I don't know if you have any advice on other ways to use, to use it. Um, for Instagram, it, I, you know, I just don't get how you kind of get the message out there really without latching on to some kind of influencer. Um, influence, uh, connecting with influencers and, you know, influencer marketing, of course, is like always a key thing and another thing in and of itself. But I do feel like a uh, big thing with Instagram and be why I suggested so many hashtags is because hashtags do help people who don't typically see your posts to be able to see your posts. Also, the way that Instagram algorithm works, um, Right now, it is. It's, it's it likes things like reels and things like that. So this is why I encourage videos and personal videos because if you post maybe a reel, it will show up. It is more likely to show up on the discovery page. Um, the way hashtags can break down is when you look at when you go through a group of hashtags, you want to be able to have small, medium, and large hashtags. So the small hashtags would be um, 28 Amendment, 28 2026, uh, about three of those. And then going on to the medium, because those are like between like 100 and 1,000 a, a type of hashtags I already went through there already. So medium hashtags would be um, 1,000 to 10,000 and large would be 10,000 and up. So kind of having those mutual hashtags that go out can help with people being able to explore and see the type of posts that you put out. Is there like a listing? Do we have a listing of hashtags that we use? We have yeah. those. Sorry, go ahead, Zai. Oh no, we just have, we have those listings of, of six, but the some of the larger hashtags would be kind of what your event would be about, um, what your post is about, the people on your posts, those would be some of the larger hashtags. So, so the smaller, oh, go can, ahead. You, go ahead. can you define what you mean by larger and medium and smaller? Are you talking about actual uh, characters in the hashtag? Are you talking about Sorry. the number of people who repeat that hashtag? What is it? Okay, so it's the number of, it's the number of, times that hashtag's been used. So if, say, so 28 amendment would be a smaller one versus, yeah, so money is not speech would be a smaller hashtag. So you would want 
those to be the first hashtag you use, about three of those. The medium hashtags, um, I, I can't say off the back because you just have to, if you were to do like a hashtag search, what could be another training in and of itself? One of the ways that Instagram works specifically. Um, but if I were to tab, type in 28 amendment, that, that has fewer than a hundred posts. So that would be a small one. Um, uh, our like hashtag lobbying, like if you had a lobby day, that would be a medium type, right? So also tagging your state that when you're having an event or something like that, if you tag your state, that's a larger one, but you also wanna have that on there. And something that I didn't mention that's also good with helping for people locally to find out the things that you have going on. Whenever you post, go ahead and put the location of the state that you're in. So that way when people see your post on Instagram or if they look up your state on Instagram, your post is more likely to come up. Well, when you say how many times that hashtag is used for small, medium or large, is that have has have been used forever or used that day or what's that time frame? So I was gonna pull it up because I a hashtag. Yeah, because I was like, there's no way to like I'm gonna, so I'm same. on Instagram. Uh, hold on. I don't know if I can yeah. when you have a background on it, then other things other than your face get <laughs> Blurred out if it's closer oh, or further it. behind. Hold on. All right. So I'm on Instagram right now. So if I, I said hashtag, I'll do Boston Red Sox. And there's been over, uh, over 4,000. 452,000 posts on Boston Red Sox. So when I click the hashtag, I can, you could, a ton of different posts come up. And these are people that I don't necessarily know at all, but these people have gone, either gone to the Boston Red Sox, like the Boston Red Sox, and they hashtag. So this would be considered a larger hashtag. Another example could be like hashtag, trying to think of popular trends like TikTok because everyone's on that. That has 110 million posts, all different things. Does that make sense? Okay. I feel really, really old. No, no, you're not old. Fine, it changes all the time and it's constantly growing. So there's there's a lot when it comes to social media in general. Zai, can you say which of like, you know, Kelly had put in uh, corporations are not people, money is not speech, uh, get money out. Like, which of those amendment specific phrases would you say get the most repetitions or are they pretty much medium at best, depending on what's going on? You mean repetitions as in how many people have used the hashtag? Yeah, you're saying small, medium, and large. So that's repetitions, right? How many mm -hmm. times it's been used? Okay, yeah. So I would say, again, I would have to go on and look. You, don't, you haven't noticed a trend that when you're posting that certain, certain ones tend to be more in the medium range versus others that are almost always in the, the small range? So typically if it's in the small range, it kind of stays in the small range unless there's like a big gap. So again, this is like how many times it's been used over time. So a hundred hashtags to a thousand hashtags or even 2000 hashtags would be a, a small hashtag. So I'm really trying to just Pull this up. Um, yeah, so that would be considered, 
for, for the most of the part, the personal hashtags that we use are smaller hashtags. Um, repetitions that we use. But you want to have some of those smaller hashtags and the medium. So to make it more simple, what we want to do is be able to have hashtags that are talking about our topic specifically, but are also, and then also have hashtags that are more broad. So we have the corporations are not people, money is not speech, um, big money, those type of 28, hashtag 28 men, hashtag 28, 26. We want those hashtags, like half of those. And we want another pair of hashtags that are really general. So hashtag Texas, hashtag government, hashtag nonprofit, stuff like that, that isn't so specific. So that way we're reaching, we're able to reach local specific, like the things that we're focused on we're, and people who are looking for those things, we're able to reach them. Or we're also taking on those hashtags that are bigger, like a state specific hashtag or a sports specific hashtag or our platform specific hashtag. And the reason why we don't wanna do just the bigger hashtags is because those can also, it's less likely to be seen because they're there's so many people, again, like a million people using this hashtag. So it's, it's harder for that hashtag to be seen, but it's also, there's also a chance for it to be seen down the line, but we don't wanna put all our eggs in, in that basket. So what this is kind of starting to form to me is like, you could have like, a, you could have a slide in your trainings or a resource or whatever, where you basically have three columns, small, medium, large. And in those columns, you have um, things that are like specific to the topic. Um, you know, I guess, you know, like hashtag 28 would be in, in one of them. And then hashtag get money out would be the next one. And in the big one would be, you know, I don't know what the biggest one is, but it's like breaking them down and coming up with a list coming up with three lists basically, but coming up with lists of hashtags for people to pick and choose based on the, the post. And then throwing in there also, um, throw in one with your state. If it's, you know, if, if it's an issue that is at the state level then throw one in, in there as a state. So this is a way for people when they're posting or when they're, um, you know, engaging to easily go through and say, okay, I'm gonna pick these three small ones. I'm gonna pick this, you know, these two mediums and these couple of large ones. And I'm gonna put them on my post just so that they kind of know or have a guidance of hashtags that can be used. Mm -hmm. But but I need to ask you, okay, after all that, I have to ask you the real question that's gonna show my age. Like, how did you search hashtags again? Do you go into Facebook and like, do a search or do you just google it yeah you just put the, um, you just put google it and and it will come up and tell you how many times that hashtag hashtag is shown up yeah so similarly to how you're searching a name are you in one of the platforms or are you just in i'm trying to yeah i'm trying to log in now so i can kind of just show oh okay mm-hmm All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can just walk through this really quickly. If I can find it, I know we have to, okay. So, at the top here is the search section. So if you type in hashtag 28 amend or 28 amendment, there's 61 posts. If you type in something like big money out, it'll show 52 posts. So these are like small type of so, 
um, like nonprofit has like 5 million. How about dark money? Because that gets mentioned a lot with S1 and HR1. Mm -hmm. So dark money has 4,000. So that would be medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like these, again, it's just different posts that will show up. And if somebody wants to follow a particular hashtag, they can do that as well. So when you're creating a post, you can always just type in really quick into the search bar what may be the hashtag that you're looking for to use and see like if it's a smaller one or if it's a bigger one. Um, mostly the ones that we're talking about specifically with the movement can most of the times be like smaller hashtags. That's why I say use things like state, um, and our, you know, things like that so that it's bigger. And we can put together a list of small, medium, and large hashtags so people can use that as a resource as well. Okay, I don't want to do all the talking on this. Gaylord, Galen, did you have a question? No, it's just learning for me, I'm trying to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm way behind on this. Then Gabriel has a comment. I'm not sure he said about Gabriel. Do you want to? That is uh, that we um, should use the American Promise. Oh, sorry. oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I just uh, I muted myself. Um, well, I, I just uh, was thinking that maybe, uh, but whenever specifically anything with American Promise, we should probably always just include the American Promise hashtag, and and hopefully maybe make that you know maybe one of the uh, the bigger hashtags, uh, you know, um, at least medium and hopefully bigger hashtags if we just automatically include it with everything that's, you know, with 20th Amendment or anything that involves American Promise itself. Or, or maybe certain things related to like, you know, getting big money out of politics and just uh, talk about 20th Amendment um, from other groups, just throw in American Promise whenever we post about the topic. Definitely, definitely always using that hashtag whenever you're, you're posting about something and, um, you know, when you're commenting, you can hashtag, but you can also mention the page, uh, the national page exclusively so people, if they want to go and learn more, they can. Do we, Kelly had mentioned about um, a list of chapters um, um, handles. I don't, I mean, I know at one point, maybe two years ago, I was trying to get people to use Twitter more. And um, I had asked to see who had a handle on Twitter and very few people did. But um, do we have any kind of, other than Facebook, I guess you have the listing for all the Facebook, do you have a, an overall listing of what the, what the handles are for all of the chapters for whatever accounts they have? That is in the resource document that so we will want everybody to, because we are encouraging uh, chapters uh, and states to go ahead and create their own state specific social media accounts. We would want to be able to have those handles and have everybody share those handles um, in the document and have everybody follow one another. So we have, you know, just a community within our social media accounts. It's in the resources talk. So we're a little past the end of our call, but if people have any questions, please feel free to email me and then I can try my best to answer them. And if I don't have the answer, I'll pass them along to Zai. And I'll also be sending a recap email, a recap email along with the recording of the call by tomorrow and or Friday. So if you have questions, I'm excited about this call because we had a pretty high turnout rate. And I think that's great. We're slowly building. So if we continue to use those hashtags, more people will be coming. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to steal your, your exit there. Um, and I also don't want to keep people too long, but I'm kind of, you know, coming up with this outline of what it sounds like people want would be like a tutorial, maybe on one platform um, with our hashtags lists that we've searched. Um, and instructions to, you know, always use a certain one. 
anybody who needs to create a, a, an account on it um, and wants to create an account, we would do that. And then we would engage. Then, you know, at the training, I would have some pages and posts kind of lined up. We could also ask the um, leaders if they have, you know, posts, pages, whatever that they would like to get the group to um, engage with also. Um, and then a little bit of house cleaning that just came up in this very last moment here that at the, somewhere at the beginning, you ask everyone to go into the resource page and please put your personal, you want personal Facebook pages and, and personal Twitter handles. Was that the, or is it, or you just want the state group ones? We'll, we can have a tab for the, the state group pages and also the personal handles so that everybody can connect and keep in contact. I think that's a great idea. Okay. And if there's anyone who would like to join Monica and co-leading yes, the please. monthly <laughs> team call on social media, we could have some fun. Marty, I'm going to send you a little outline that I have here, which hopefully I'll try to do tonight to see what the family is. Oh, yeah. No worries. But that would be great. Thank you so much, Zai, for this great training. Thank you. Sarah. Thanks, everyone, for listening to me for such a long period of time. <laughs> no, you did great. Thank you all so much. Have a great evening. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Yes. Good evening.